Hello and welcome to a MySQL tutorial. In this tutorial I will be doing a kind of introduction to SQL specifically using MySQL or SQL some people call it but I prefer to call it SQL. Um, so once you have your MySQL uh, server running, I'm not going to show you how to set that up. I'll uh, link someone down below who I thought was really good at explaining it that I, I followed their tutorial on how to do it. I mean, it's kind of a difficult. I mean, it was difficult for me, at least. Probably won't be for some of you guys, but anyways, uh, let's just get into it. This is once you have everything set up. So I'm just assuming that you do. If not, you can pause this or whatever and go set up your server. But anyways, so first thing we want to do is we want to look at this area called schemas. And the schemas area is basically your database. So every single thing here is the database. I have a few databases that I was practicing on. And so how you create a new schema is you right click here, create schema. And then you name your schema. I'm just going to call this uh, tutorial. And then to apply that, apply, finish. And you can exit out of that. And then as you see here, tutorial was added. And there is nothing here, but that will change soon. So before we do anything, we actually have to tell SQL what database we want to use. So we literally just type in the word use and then tutorial. And then, you hold on. Oh, sorry, I don't really know where I was, but um, yeah, okay. So you type in use tutorial, and then uh, you want to click this little lightning bolt thing, and then that'll execute your commands. Or you could do control shift enter, or control, not control shift, control enter. And what that will do is that'll just execute the, the, the uh, line that you're on. That won't execute the whole thing, so that's why I like just pressing this, because that'll execute everything you have. And now that we've already typed that in, keep in mind SQL is a querying language, which means that once something has been done, you should probably delete it unless you're going to repeat that. Um, so we don't want to tell SQL that we're using this twice, so after we say this, we have to actually delete it. That we don't have to do that for everything, because sometimes we do want to repeat certain things, like when it comes to displaying our database, which I'll get to in a second, but for that, we just want to do that. Um, so the next thing is creating a table. So how you do that is SQL is a fourth generation language, which means that it's pretty close to English or just like regular grammatical grammatical structures. So uh, that's a lot of what it is. So it's very simple. You say create table. You don't have to do it in caps. Um, I learned it in caps. I learned SQL in caps, so I'm just used to doing it like that. You can write this in lowercase. It'll do the same thing. It doesn't pay attention to um, case sensitivity or spacing, so you could put it wherever you want. But anyways, create table. Then we want to name our table. So let's name our table workers. And then under workers, we want the uh, for create table it takes a few arguments so what create table does I s you can sh like I said you can structure it however you want I just like to do it like this so it takes however many arguments you want but how you define arguments is that's the arguments it takes are the columns that's going to be inside of the table so the first thing I like to do at least in uh, very simple ones, is give every column an ID that can distinguish it. So we're just going to define a row. This is going to be our row name, ID. And then we are going to call it an int. So we are defining a row. It's almost like defining a variable, except we're defining a column or row. So we are defining ID as an integer. And some IDs, SQL is very changeable for uh, ID different. Uh, I don't know if it's I if it's considered an ID or different query things. If you're not using MySQL, it might you might have to physically type out integer. And uh, but MySQL uses int. And I like just typing int. So yeah, and then we can separate these all by commas. Keep in mind spacing does not matter. So then let's also do username as text, and then email as text. And so now if we 
actually I'm also going to actually no I'll just create the table first and as you can see down here the table was successfully created so now that I've already created the table I can get rid of this and then if I want to see my table I do select all from the name of then the name of our database tutorial and then run that um, hold on a second tutorial that tutorial does not exist I think I have to oh wait I didn't update this um, Oh yeah, no, I have to do select all from workers. The sorry, uh, I was doing the name of the database. You have to do the name of the table that you want to select. I don't know why I thought Toro that wouldn't work out. Uh, kind of a mental brain, whatever. Uh, so yeah, select all from workers, and then as you can see, that will show that ID username and email. We haven't actually entered anything into this yet. It's just showing us our three row names that we entered. So now we can actually keep this because we want to see our database every time. So this is one of those things that we can keep in. We don't have to delete it. So how we insert values into tables in SQL is we do insert into, keep in mind, this is a fourth generation language. So if you ever want to know how to do something, it's very literal. So insert into, then we want to call our table. Uh, actually, no, we want to call our, yeah, our table insert into workers and then remember we defined workers as having three columns we can see right here ID username and email so those are the three arguments it's gonna take the ID the username and the email actually we have to put a semicolon here to let SQL know that we are ending our statement because there's another thing after we didn't have to do it before because we were only doing one line stuff but now we have to add that um, so the first thing it takes is an integer argument so we are just going to say one for the first one and then takes oh yeah for uh, unlike most programming languages for text or string it will take uh, instead of putting it in between like quotation marks like this you actually put it in between two apostrophes it's kinda weird and takes some getting used to so if you accidentally type that in you see an error that it didn't take the right argument that it might be why so it's not too uh, not to these, to these, just make that clear. So then it takes two more text arguments because we define that as username and email. So I'm just going to say my name, Ben, and then separate that by a comma. And then email is less, and then I'll just do like Ben at not at notreal.org. And oh, wait, uh, I forgot. Uh, you want to insert into workers, and then you have to say values. That's why I was getting that error there. So now, if we go ahead and do that, we can see that it worked. ID is inserted one, my name, and then my email address. And we don't have to actually get rid of this. We can actually copy this, and then paste it a few times, and then uh, two, three four then just give some random names like Jeremy and then, whoops and that and Sally Ken and so on and then we can just run that and then we have our list right here so this is pretty much the fundamentals to a database right here is you'll just have your IDs, the names, the emails, and sometimes passwords. And then the last thing I'm going to show you, because I only have one minute left, is just how to find. Actually, I probably should say that for the next, because I'm going to run out of time. Um, but yeah, this is basically the fundamentals of how you add, create tables, add data into them, and see you. Yeah. So I will see you in the next tutorial. If this helped, please leave a comment or a like or something. And yeah, see you next time.